Hello, everybody. I'm a little bit late on my Ryzen coverage for one reason, and I'm pretty sure you're all aware of this reason. The performance doesn't make any sense. And I got my Ryzen right here. I got it in its motherboard. You can see that is definitely a Ryzen. Here, I'll take out the chip for everybody. There you go. That's the motherboard. Here's the chip. I got the 1800X. And I'm going to be bringing you no gaming performance. The processor, it's broken right now. It's broken right now. Actually, Windows is broken. I'm being a little harsh, a little comedic about this. So I have done some CPU-based tests where I compared it against my 5820K. And I also did clock-for-clock -clock comparisons with the 5820K by disabling two of the cores on the 1800X and then clocking them both to the same frequency. And then I have another set of tests that I haven't seen any other outlet really do, and that is run OBS, record um, a video while I am also doing a CPU intensive workload. And I will be showing you those results and explaining those. I would love to be doing that test be, um, with gaming performance, but until Windows has a patch to properly address the threads uh, between all of the different uh, core complexes, then I I don't think it's correct of me to, pe uh, to, to, to be showing the performance in that light. I'm not being an apologist to AMD. It's just, it's it's not, technically correct performance showing that gaming performance many have said i do things that are not correct to do it plays just fine it just bottlenecks the hell out of my uh, 980 ti i i've done the 3d marks i'll um i'll, I'll show them really quick but take them with a grain of salt they're I, I, they're, they're probably going to be wrong once uh, Microsoft has a Windows 10 patch. Um, some interesting things to note about the motherboard that I chose from ASRock, the X370 Killer SLI, is pretty much every day there has been a new beta BIOS update. And with the latest one, they have added XMP profile compatibility because before you would have to manually set it, even though it had XMP, it just wouldn't work correctly. It would boot loop over and over and over and over. And they also added the ability to disable the SMT. I'm not gonna be taking a look at this. All of this was done on, all of the test results were done on a previous version of the BIOS, not the release one. Uh, the one right after, I think that one might be 1.50. Um, but yeah, um, in workstation workloads, if you're doing encoding, if you're doing rendering, if you are multitasking, but you only have the money to get, you know, a, a quad core or a quad core with hyper threading that I recommend this as long as you don't mind teething, there's teething going on with this new platform. It's a new CPU. It's something that. Windows hasn't seen before. The motherboard manufacturers only got when we were able to get the processor. And um, it dominates those types of workloads. Are you gonna be streaming? Then this is perfect. Yes, you could say that it's kind of null and void when you uh, are gonna be offloading the encoding when you stream to your GPU. That's fair. 
but I also know that you get better quality when you're doing encoding by using X264 on your CPU. And that's where this will be faster. So let's check out the benchmark results. Let's listen to me explain them and distill it down and try to make sense of it for you guys. And uh, yeah, let's do it. And by the way, this isn't the Ryzen. The Ryzen's in a, mach in, in a machine already. This is uh, an AMD A6 3600. Yep. Here are the, all, all of my benchmark numbers, and this will be very confusing at first. So let's take it to not confusing land. Okay. Now these are the relevant benchmarks for comparing to what is in my current computer, the computer that I'm using right now. So right here, I have adjusted my Ryzen to 12 threads, and I have adjusted the 5820K to dual channel memory. I removed two sticks, so they're both running actually the same kit, running the same speed, and I ran all of the same tests in the same way from the same hard drive. I just took the hard drive out of my computer, put it into the Ryzen computer, um, after I did updates and other stuff, you know, there you go. So then I uh, ran the tests. So if you adjust clock for clock, both running at 3.2 gigahertz, you could very clearly see that the Ryzen wins on IPC. And, the, and it shows on the single threaded of Cinebench. And... Then I took a look at IDA64. And in IDA64, the for some reason, the memory controller seems to win out in almost every test here, except for the latency. And the latency... Um, don't really understand why it's doing that besides, like I mentioned, the teething problems. Maybe a BIOS update, maybe a Windows update uh, needs to happen. Maybe it won't get fixed, but I mean, I'm not seeing it affect anything. It's not doing anything detrimental to performance. Next thing we take a look at is all of the CPU tests that IDA64 has. And it's a hit or a miss, but I mean, it's within reason on the, uh, the first test on photo works, the Ryzen wins, the Ryzen wins again on, uh, the Zlib, which I guess is compression on AES, which is encryption. It pulls away like an insane person. And then even does that on the auto motherboard settings where they're not uh, clock for clock, but they are thread for thread. It pulls away like crazy. Same thing with hashing. Pulls away like crazy. On VP8, it wins, and that's, uh, that's encoding. So almost, almost everything. The Ryzen seems to pull away. Except when you get to the floating point uh, type of tests. And I'm not sure why that is. That could be a multi-threading issue. But not sure. But I mean, overall, it seems like Ryzen is a better CPU than at least Haswell E. And we get into, um, which one was this? This was performance test. I did a performance test, which was shown off a whole lot in the leaks. And again, we're getting, um, we're getting some hit and miss, mainly Intel's going away with this one. But then for some reason you get floating point math winning on both of these. The SSE performance 
Seems to be just about equal given the edge to Ryzen. The encryption tests uh, Ryzen pulls away like a madman. Sorting algorithm seems to be about equal. And now we get to individual tests for memory. And let's see here. So database operations, Ryzen uh, loses in both the tests. Memory reads, Ryzen wins. Available RAM, I mean, that should pretty much, that doesn't really matter for anything. I tried not to have that much running in the background, but you know, margin of error kind of stuff. Threaded memory, Ryzen seems to win. Cached RAM, that seems like once you give the thread, no, no, no. Okay, once you give the clock speed back to um, Ryzen, Ryzen pulls away. Memory writes, Intel wins that one. Latency again, you're seeing Intel winning there. But when it all go comes down, I basically just added up all of the scores to see who wins. If you just want like big numbers, who has the highest all of the scores? Although I didn't adjust memory latency, meaning if this is higher, then it should deduct, but who cares? It's so minimal. Then Ryzen seems to win. Yeah, there's fault in, in my methods of calculating the approximate score. I even see it. But you can't argue with a lot of these tests and a lot of these scores. So now we get into my more complicated chart after we go to the easily comparable, where, you know, if you just want to know you're you pretty much know after watching this part but now if you want to get real detailed here let me pull uh some examples and highlight them so i have the encoding tests highlighted so i could easily find them so we could tell what to compare um so let's see here we have 12 thread 16 thread 16 thread. We got that one as an encoding one. Okay, so we have a comparable here. Uh, we got the Ryzen and the 5820K. So it'll be these two uh, lines. And I didn't complete that one. But that's fine because we got kind of what we need to see here. And. If you're going to be doing streaming while you are um, playing a game, or you know, I, I know people stream art now, so you're streaming while showing off in Cinema 4D or streaming while showing off in uh, Photoshop, um, you're not going to have that much loss of CPU performance uh, streaming. And again, this is adjusted for threads, but not adjusted for frequency. I said I was going to show you guys uh, some of my early Fire Strike results, and I got that here for you. So I have, let's just add them all to the compare because that makes it fun, doesn't it? I'll just add that guy for now. So that's the Ryzen with my 980 Ti. Let's get a 980 Ti here. Just any old one. I'll just do this guy. They, yeah, they're comparable on the clock speeds on the GPU. We got uh, 1550 there, and the 5820 looks overclocked. So let's take a look at those. And you can clearly see that there is a reduction of performance, but only on the graphics side of things. And it's it's not it's not that bad it looks like a whole bunch but it's really not a whole bunch that actually gets reduced uh going off of uh the ryzen 
or going on the horizon, I mean. Um, some of these almost don't even make sense how the numbers worked out. I mean, I don't, I don't know how they calculate the scores really, but I mean, okay, so you're seeing on Ryzen, which is on the left, plus 5.3 percent, 18,000 to 19,000, and then you're seeing on the 5820K in the graphics score. 21,959 to 21,569. And then for some reason, the combined score is higher on the 5820K, but the physics is higher on the Ryzen. So you could see things aren't making much sense here. And it's repeatable. It shows, but a takeaway from all of this is when I'm watching the, the benchmarks go on Ryzen, it's not skippy or stuttery. It looks smooth, but it's slow. Same thing when, I'm pl when I played the couple games that I did when uh, I was uh, forcing myself to use Ryzen to, as my main rig. It was slow, but it was smooth which is very interesting. So taking that into account, let's get rid of, you know, the, the, the bottleneck or whatever you want to call it. So let's use my 480 results. Because I bought a 480 just to test with this thing and just to put in the Ryzen rig uh, when I'm using it. And I, and I want the 980 Ti. So we have, uh, here we go, Ryzen, just do a normal fire strike. Then we have, when you do a normal fire strike, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, that one's overclocked a little bit too much. Let's find another guy. Man, 1506, when did I do that? 1506. Well, I only have 1506s. So, I mean, I'm forced to go with it for now. So, we see the same pattern. We see a higher physics score on, on the, the Ryzen. And the graphics scores seem higher. But the gap is a whole lot smaller. 11 thousand on the Ryzen 12,000 on the 5820K. I mean, in no way is this like unplayable. Unplayable would be if you're still using an older AMD CPU right now. Then get Ryzen and wait out this awkward period and you should be great. But yeah, I mean, th this is all I've really done for now uh, and have uh, able to be looked at and compared. I do have Ashes of the Singularity, but who actually plays that? Does anybody play that? Um, so I have a whole lot more tests to run. I'm real busy these days, so it's taken longer for me to get around to actually doing them. But I hope to have... A more detailed look at this when SMT seems to be fixed or whatever is hindering the performance seems to be fixed. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you want to see me follow up on, uh, on uh, the Ryzen performance to see how it matures. And I will see you guys in the next video.